Hello, everyone, and welcome to All Games No Masters. All Games No Masters is the GMless branch of the RPG Exploration Society with Saving Throw. So, welcome, explorers. Uh, before we get into our announcements, I'd love to go around the horn and introduce all of our fantastic players, starting with Amanda. Oh, me. Hi, uh, I am Amanda. That's, I don't know what else, what else to say. <laughs> That's me. And uh, next we'll go with Max. Hi, I'm Max. I'm not Amanda. This is that. true. <laughs> and uh, uh, Randy? Uh, yeah, I, I guess I'm Randy. Uh, or are you Amanda? I so. I'm, I'm not Amanda. <laughs> we, we promise we Too didn't have like a, a weird like body swap Wednesday thing that ha like it's we're playing a game about magic. There's nothing. I'm Aki, I think. Pretty sure. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Welcome I believe to it. our show. We're getting off to a doozy of a start. <laughs> Anyways, let's talk about our goals. We are aiming for a $250 per episode and or 15 new subs and Patreon pledges per episode. Our season long goal is to reach 150 new subs or pledges by June 30th. If we reach that goal, we'll unlock a poll where you choose our final game. Not us. You choose the final game that we play of the season. Hitting $250 allows us to pay this amazing cast and keep content like this on the air. Even if you can't afford to back us right now, please spread the word and share the stream with friends and families. You're not only helping us, but you're helping all the indie designers that we feature as well. Also, if you'd like to, you know, maybe bug us a little bit, $15, 1500 bits, or five gift subs will allow you to send us a message that we will read live on air. Um, it's a great opportunity to, you know, just, just do it. Go for it, please. We love your messages. We'd love to hear from you. Um, we are proudly sponsored in part by Roll20. Fall of Magic and many of the games we play here are available natively within the Roll20 app, so you should check it out now. Um, also, Peep our friends at Die Hard Dice, where you can save 10% by using the code NATURAL20 at checkout. Use command exclamation point D-H-D-I-C-E, D-H Dice, in chat for links and info. And you can order our friend Critical Bard's dice set and get your 10% off. So you're like double helping friends. Don't see a downside to that. Uh, hey! To everyone who is watching us on YouTube, thank you so much. Do us a solid and leave us a like, comment, subscribe, the whole nine yards. Uh, it really helps the show and the channel as a whole. Join our Patreon now and be a part of the new Exploration Society. We're trying to expand, and if we can get 500 new backers this month, we'll be on track. That's immense, but we can do it. Uh, this is a crucial step in keeping our content on the air and eventually growing the channel. Your support with comes with many rewards like special pins, swag, merch discounts, one page adventures written by our crew and so much more. So be part of the society, the society and join up today. And with all of those announcements out of the way, I believe we are ready to begin. Uh, today we are going to be playing part one of two of a game called Fall of Magic. Fall of Magic is a collaborative storytelling game that takes place on a scroll-like uh, apparatus. Uh, we're obviously not playing with the physical scroll, so we'll be using the scroll that's been provided by the Roll20 app. Um, I mean, I don't know what else to say about this game other than that I'm really excited to be facilitating it today. Um, it is just beautiful in its design. Um, and I guess what I'll start with is maybe we'll do a quick read through of uh, some of our rules. Um, I'm going to start, let me get to where I need to go. Okay, so um, do we actually need to read any of this? Uh, I don't think so. So what we're going to do is we're, uh, I'm making an executive decision. We don't actually need to read it. A lot of this is like set up for things like how to play like role-playing games and social like collaborative storytelling games, safety at the table, those kinds of things. Um, if ever you have the chance to actually look at Fall of Magic, it has a very comprehensive page 
all about all of the stuff that help you set up a game with people who maybe never played before. Um, so I definitely recommend it for the resources that it provides within the text. Um, first, we're going to do a little bit of setup here, starting with our introduction. Magic is dying, and the Magus is dying with it. We travel together to the realm of Umbra, where magic was born. And the first thing that we're going to do with everyone is we are going to choose our names. Um, so the game does provide like a list of potential names that you could use for your character. Um, names like Harp, Kabu, um, which just makes me think of Turnips, um, Elamura, Justice, Vago, Fawn, Caspian, Piccolo, or River. Obviously, if you want to choose any one of those names, you're more than welcome to. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if a couple of people in here are about to get creative on me, um, which I'm here for. Um, so uh, first you choose your name, and then you choose your title. Um, does anybody have like something already kind of brewing in their brain pan? Um, there are quite a few options as far as titles go as well. Like um, we we start in an area, um, like all of these places are fairly close together on the map um, from what I can tell. So. Uh -huh. uh, hmm. Yeah, I, I thought something, I think. Okay. Um, so I am going to be Fawn Knight of Stormguard. Fawn Knight of Stormguard. I mm -hmm. like all the things about that. Uh, pronounce she, her? Yes. I'm sorry. Yes. She, her, Fawn. She absolutely hates her name, but we'll get that later. <laughs> <laughs> Real boy named Sue scenario. Um, all right. Um, also, this is Buffy. She will be playing Buffy. Hi, Buffers. That's also, so I assume a Knight of Stormguard. Yes. Ooh, you want to be she a knight? Be, she should be your your trusty She's squire. Oh, sorry, Buffy. Um, I have an idea for a title, but I don't have an idea for a name. Okay. I was planning on being, I, I think I'm going to be a giant of Mistwood, which sounds very fun. But um, I don't know. Maybe I'll just, um, maybe I'll be called like. Aki, just a question. <laughs> is, is a giant like actually giant or would it? Oh, that's a very interesting question. So in, in the, in our world, like are giants actually large like like what do they look like in in this world like what what are giants uh -huh. i i took it fairly literally um in that i, mean, I was fine. a very big um and uh yeah i think probably let's let's uh, the giants are probably like anywhere between kind of 15 and 25 feet tall um, they're very big, uh, and because of that, um, you know, in certain places that are are open to giants, have had to design buildings accordingly and and such because they're you know twice as tall as a person, which means they're really probably about eight times as big as a person, um, and so people have had to kind of think around that aesthetic uh, hurdle. <laughs> But speaking of aesthetic, like they're a giant of Mistwood. Like, is there anything specific about Mistwood as a place that kind of influences the way that the giants look? Like, ah, as opposed um, to like being a storm giant or or a mountain giant or something like that? Because I don't think yeah, you've yeah. ever really, I don't think I've ever really heard about forest a giant that giants. would be from a forest. So I'm kind of curious. Um, yeah, that's a neat idea. What would a forest giant be like? Well, I assume. Like many forest creatures, they would have a certain amount of camouflage because that's very ah. standard forest dweller vibes. So maybe <clears throat> all of their skin is sort of like rough and barky and has different kind of 
depending on the kinds of trees of the mistwood that they're trying, that they sort of look like they're browns and greens and grays and whites and stuff, kind of striating up their bodies. Um, cool. So they look almost tree-like, but you know, when they're out in like a city or out on the plains, they're like very starkly obvious because there's this big, like striated, bumpy creature walking around. But you know, when they like nap up against a tree or up in some branches, they could kind of be harder to find. I love everything about that. So very. What's much. the name? Uh, I don't think he's come up with one yet. I don't know. I, the first thing that came to my head was Kronk, and I don't. <laughs> have you what? seen the Emperor's New Groove recently? Have, which is <laughs> no, not recently. I mean, I've seen it. But like, Kronk Maybe... is the best boy. He is. Yeah, a nice... he's the best Kronk boy. Kronk is a nice boy. Um, now I'm just gonna have to avoid doing a Patrick Warburton. <laughs> Why? Um, Why would you want to avoid is, that? Yeah, because I, I did it last it, season already. All the time. <laughs> okay, I already did one. Um, how about um, no? We'll we'll make it something slightly more uh, reasonable. Um, how about? Um, his, how about Leaf? His name can be Leaf. Oh, um, I love I love these names so far. Like, yeah, they they're making me very happy. Fawn, Leaf, Giant of Mistwood. Yeah, I think we're we're starting to strike up a little bit of a. It's very very cool, cool cool cool. Uh, we didn't really get you to describe like what kind of armor yeah. does your Don't knight wear. Uh, yeah, like what what's up with a storm guard? Oh. Um, <clears throat> what's up? What are knights of storm guard like? So I kind of saw it as like, or thought of it as a, you know, a giant crew of paladins, right? So um, very, very honorable, but, and also kind of like Templars from like Dragon Age, where they like have a very specific ideology and, and um, that's, how, that's how they function, but honorably. Mm. <laughs> they are honorably judgmental. <laughs> Um, and, um, and yeah, she's like, she's been with them for probably like more than like 20 years or something like that. Um, but the armor, oh man, you think I would have thought about this, huh? Um, I think it's definitely, it's not like stiff or metal. Um, I think it's more of a like, like hide or like thick, like leather maybe type of situation. Um, and it is uh, all dyed black because of course it is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and they, oh, because they are, it's like an all for one, one for all, we are all together kind of thing. They wear like little like masks over their eyes. It's more symbolic than anything else, but um, all of them wear it and they never take it off. I love this. This very is very cool. Kind of very like I, 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 I'm getting the whole Knights of Templar kind of musketeery sort of vibe from this that I'm, I'm really doing. And I like that you've gone in the leather kind of hide direction for a knight. That's not something you see very often for knights. And I like that. I just felt like it goes with the the kind of foresty, earthy type of thing that we seem to be so far creating. So yeah, 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 for sure. Cool. Like anyway, enough about me. Oh, never, <laughs> never enough. Never enough. I agree. You can always have more. Okay. What's what? How about you, Randy? What what you thinking? Yeah. So I'm thinking. Uh, his name is Darthor. So D A R T H O R. D A R T H. O R, mm -hmm. and he is a crab singer. Yes, uh, is. What yeah. is a crab singer? Oh, oh, you haven't heard? No, um, I'm imagining sort of like a bardic college, uh, but like they carry around a shield on their back. That's sort of like what sort of is the crab-like part. So they can hide and like be safe. But the, the the idea is he's a wandering bard there to like tell stories. Um, I imagine that Stalia on the map has like merchants and scholars. So I imagine it as being uh, sort of a, a people 
place full of people trying to learn and, and study. And I believe that the bards are there as well to learn stories. And that's sort of where I want to start. Huh. Yeah. He, uh, what he wears, I imagine, obviously, a nice big shield on his back. Uh, sort of a robe, uh, not a robe, but like a, a hood, almost like this. And uh, <laughs> sort of uh, some finer clothes. Uh, he likes to be kind of flashy He's when he can. flash. Yeah. Yes. Love that. Darthor. Okay, cool. Um, let's see. I think I am going to play. Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to play a Raven of Raven Hall. And I think in the case of my character, Raven is probably something pretty similar to like the way, um, oh gosh, what are they called? Kenku sort of work in D&D, &D. like an anthropomorphic Raven-like creature. But I like the idea that like, this is not like, this is not like a full Raven this is somebody who was human who is transforming into a raven. Like it is part of the process of like uh, my my kind of idea is that um, ravens are like high level mages within this world, and being one with the magus and with the magus's magic means a tra like means transformation it means becoming something and as you go through your life learning magics like that transformation like progresses apace um and only once you've reached full raven form have you like properly like achieved full magical status essentially so i like to i like to think that like my raven is reaching the end cycles of like achieving the pinnacle of magic magical power so it's a bit of a bit of a bummer that magic is dying but like they're older like they've they're they've they've lived a long life and they've done they're very adept at magic um uh i really love the name caspian um i've never played a character named caspian and i like the idea of playing Caspian, the Raven of Ravenhall. Um, nice. May them pronouns. Da, da, da. I love this already. Okay. No, I mean, we only talk through our characters and we already create, are creating very, like a very rich yeah. world, right? It so I love is it. a nice tool for world building to just be like, we're not going to tell you shit. You got to like make some stuff up and like figure it out. And some of these are like, very intentionally strange, mm -hmm. i.e. Crab Singer. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I saw Crab Singer and I was like, instantly, I have to be that. And I'm gonna figure out what more, I'm gonna figure out more about them as we go, but Crab Singer just was too good to let pass. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Voice from the Sky. We appreciate you. That voice is brought to you by one Domzuk. Our, uh, what are you playing, Dom? <laughs> He's playing the producer. <laughs> Whoops. I think I fixed it. So for those of you watching, we've gone insane. <laughs> yeah, we've uh, we've been ta we're talking to our we're t we are talking to an actual voice in the sky. Anyways, um, back anyway, on now track. my captions are working. Hooray! I'm sorry. Yeah. You're good. Things happen. All right. So now that we've chosen our names and our titles, next thing that we do is we choose our tokens. Um, there are a series of tokens. The most important token, which I'm about to place on the board, is the Magus, which is represented by this bird, this raven-like bird token. Um, I, I'm going to choose my token first. I'm choosing the candle. It's this golden token. Uh, is I mean, mine is pretty obvious. I'm going to take the sword. Okay. If you want to place yourself on the boat. Um, 
Randy, I have a guess to what you want, but why don't you go ahead and take what you like? So that... Yeah, I'm going to pick... Uh, I actually... Can can we pick the other of the two? Because so... I think I think you're... I, so uh, for full disclosure, because I don't know what all of you can see on your screens because um, I'm not watching the Twitch. Um, there are actually two versions of your of each token that you can choose. Um, I'm choosing... The one I chose is the top token, but if you feel like one of those tokens fits your character better right now and the other might fit your character better later, you can kind of switch between the two. I think that the cool thing about the the fact that there are two tokens is that they do kind of show a progression or a change in the character that you can then manifest in actual token form. So yeah, pick the one that you feel yeah. fits your character right now. I, I would say this one. It's a little river, sort of in its banks going along <laughs> so let's see i'm gonna grab a tree which tree i'm gonna grab the leafy tree i like the leafy tree oh cool. uh, right so we are all going to start here in raven hall so the way the game progresses is thus uh we reach an area on the map and that area is surrounded by four or five different locations within whatever like larger location we are. Um, we have the location followed by the scene and then beneath the scene, we have the story prompt. Um, so yeah, uh, I think just for the purposes of, of giving an example, I, I shall go first. Um, let's see. So my options are the bridge, the menagerie, cause we're all in Raven Hall, um, Rose Gardens and the scrying. Hmm. Have we said the little prompt that is the beginning of the game? Uh, yes, magic is dying. Yes, yes. good. Just I have one. indeed said it. Just testing you <laughs> because I have the memory like a leaky bucket. <laughs> cool. I am going. <laughs> no, uh, I am going to. Let's see. I actually. I'm gonna go to the scrying pool. I feel like that makes the most sense for my character. So the scrying pool, my scene is the scrying pool and um, why you serve the magus. I think that what I actually want to do um, is I actually want to bring in um, everybody's characters. I want to have kind of a, a, a conversation with all of you because since this is the first scene of our journey, I kind of want to, I want us all to have like a moment together. Um, my character invites you all to Raven Hall, um, and the like. You all received a summons that basically said uh, the portent. Like, it has been portended that. Um, the portents have shown that magic is dying and I go on a journey now to seek the cause. I am asking that each city send their finest, um, their finest to help me on this journey. And so you are all summoned to this place to meet with me. Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. It looks like we have gathered quite, quite the group of people. This is, this is good. Mistwood and Distalia and Stormguard. I see we couldn't find anybody from Barley Town, but that is <laughs> that is okay. I I hope you are all well and that your journey was not too difficult. Actually, it was a, a, a little bit rough. There wasn't much food on the road, um, and I was left without a proper stagecoach. So, oh, that must have been trialsome for you. I am so sorry that you had to use your legs as they were intended to be used. But alas, I guess there was no other way. Indeed. Um, I little hope. shellfish next time you just make sure to have more money on you be wealthier and a stagecoach will be available Unders 
Third, yes. Indeed, money is often the um, the cure to many woes. But you, fair daughter of Stormguard, I trust your journey was not too treacherous. Uh, no more than any other. Got on a oh. horse, rode it here. Good, good, good. I believe you all know why you have been summoned. I am afraid to say that it appears that the signs and portents have pointed towards the dying of magic. Indeed, I have spoken at length with the Magus, who seems to be growing weaker every passing day as the power of this land seeps away. He has asked me to take him to Umbra, where magic was born. But this is not a quest that he and I can go on alone. It is for all the people of these lands to take on this task and discover the reason why magic is dying. Uh, <clears throat> well as I am honor bound to escort the Magus to his final resting place. And I shall do so and make sure he comes to no harm before then. I thank you for your humble and obedient service. The Knights of Stormguard have ever been our greatest allies and protectors. As long as I get to document this in the next great tale, then I'm okay. I am, I am thinking it is no small thing that a crab singer of Estalia was chosen to be Estalia's representative, that there will be many a great tale that will come forth from this journey. Well, you know Mistwood's attitude towards this. If magic falls, so does Mistwood. Indeed, it is a... There may be much peril on this journey, so we must all of us have our wits about us. Yep. I go now to prepare the Magus for the journey. And until then... You are all free to explore Raventown at your leisure. We shall meet at the next sundown to begin our journey. Or the next sunup, I should say. You have until sunup next day. Until then, the city is yours. Good. Thank Thanks you, Bird. You. The second you dismiss, on his left. Cool. All right. Uh, whoever would like to go next, uh, I don't. I don't have any like ideas for a pre-established order. I think this is a game that kind of allows for there not to be an established order. So if any of you have something you're particularly feeling right now, uh, go for it. Um. I have an idea. Cool. Uh, I'm going to head over to the bridge. Um, the prompt is your face in the river. Um, and let's see. Um, let's see, Darthor, I'm going to, do you mind if I take you with for this scene? Oh, please. Uh, all right. So. I think what I'd like to do is um, I'll set the scene and then if, if I will drag you into this shit somehow. <laughs> um, so the, the bridge uh, at, at Raven Hall is sort of a, a long and wide kind of like 
marble object. It's it looks like one piece of stone, right? Like one impossibly large piece of marble. Marble, like someone had taken the you know top off a mountain and carved it down. Um, probably created by magic. Um, truly a beautiful piece of architecture uh and it's re it's big enough that kind of it is the entire entry you know through thoroughfare into and out of raven hall that it can it can handle just like thousands and thousands of people um moving back and forth on it uh and i'm going to go and uh leaf kind of is wandering along it it's one of the few places where he feels like he has enough space um and and feels like he can kind of stretch out in in raven hall it's a very big city it's a crowded city so uh being outdoors in a big expansive space is very nice um and as he goes along i think he starts to kind of take in the fact that raven hall has more and more people leaving than there are coming in. Quite a large proportion are leaving. Um, and and he starts to kind of question it and realize maybe this is not a great sign. Um, so he walks up to one of the people, you know, like a caravan that's kind of heading out. It's like a, a merchant or somebody that's that's clearly packed up everything and is on the move um, and kind of leans forward and grabs the cart and stops it from moving and the donkey that's kind of tra pulling it is now like scrabbling and he looks down at the merchant and it's kind of ho oh, why do you leave raven hall uh, and if one of you wouldn't mind playing a merchant for me that would be great who can i drag into this aki you want to be a merchant yeah um um well uh... If, well, that's a very impertinent question, but if you must know, mm. rumor has begun to spread that the Magus has fallen ill. And if the Magus has fallen ill, then surely that means our protection is failing. Many of us are leaving because, well, we simply don't feel safe here anymore. <laughs> you ridiculous. Not feeling safe here. What better world is there out there? Well, at least out there, there's opportunity. We have no idea if the power of Raven Hall will persist after the Magus is gone. And what would you do to save it? I... It is not for me to save the realm oh. of magic. No. I am but a mere merchant. But a mere merchant. Who will get up and leave at the first sign of trouble? It's certainly not the first sign. Have you? Have you been living under a rock? Things. Have no, been, trees. Things have been in decline for some time now. Perhaps it is not as strongly felt in the woods from which you come. <sighs> True. Thicker skin. Fear does not be felt so quickly. Go, before I am the thing that you are afraid of. Mercy me. They scamper off with their cart in tow. He kind of wanders along and sees an old fisherman, maybe sitting on the edge of the, of the bridge, just kind of running a line. Um, and he looks over and he sees, um, Darthor and he kind of waves Darthor over. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, uh, branch or, or tree, uh, leaf, right? Yes. Yes, uh. little one. Leaf. Yes. You write this down. Uh, okay. Everybody in this town is a coward. 
ex- excuse me, everyone. Everyone. They uh, flee, and they do not fight. They are cowards. Uh, okay, I, I guess we're writing this down. Done. Um, Ask this old fisherman. Oh, uh, you, oh. old man. Why do you leave? Amanda, would you mind playing an old fisherman? Uh, why do I leave? Um, <sighs> I'm, I'm, I'm too old to work this hard. Hmm. I'm too old to work this hard catching fish takes three times as long as it used to. I can't Mm. stand up that long. I gotta make a living. And I also gotta make sure I keep living. And in order to do that, I can't stay here anymore. I'm gonna move in with my my daughter. Uh, uh, See, uh, uh, tall, sir. This fisherman is leaving not because they're not brave, but because they can't take it anymore. Perhaps your statement is, ooh, you're kind of big, yeah. Mm. Right, right, you're right, I got it. And the he fisherman un- is a coward, write this down. He underlines it so that you can see it. <laughs> you, old man. I will show you how easy it is to catch a fish, and then you will go back into the city, and you will fight, and you will save it, and you fight. will do what you can. Fight? Look at me. You will not I can't make even a fish stand up straight not. anymore. How do you expect me to fight? That's a young man's game. Ah, you know nothing. And I just kind of plunk into the river and come out with two huge handfuls of fish, you know, (laughs) a hundred fish. And I kind of look up and plop them next to the fisherman. So men's fish. There. Now you don't need to fish. Now you have time for other things. Um, And I (laughs) I think he just starts like, he just keeps, he just, Backs away and just keeps walking. Like he doesn't have any more in him right now. He's like, no, I have to fuck. I have to leave. And I just, Leaf just kind of looks down and stares at his own reflection and he's absolutely befuddled as to what is happening here in this town and he can't figure it out. And I think that's the end of the scene is he's just confused by humanity. Uh, Darthor is just is looking around just like, I can't believe all of that just happened. <laughs> cool. Uh, if that's the case, then after having seen uh, a lot of fish just being thrown down by this bridge, uh, I'm going to wander away to um, to the menagerie, if that works. All right. Yeah, so... Uh, just sort of trying to get away from Leaf because Leaf is kind of big and intimidating, um, but not not me. Just just you know, uh, our, our our crab singer is not the bravest. Um, but he enters the menagerie, and what I imagine it, it is is just a, a wide open space with like very tall towers of mul- multiple like caged animals, like every exotic. Um, creature that you can imagine from like small little little rodent type creatures to like big winged beasts um, and on the air is the scent of sort of incense and like spices and there's also like a market sort of inside um, but he, he he's sort of wandering here uh, and he comes to a small, uh, a small cage with a very small creature in it. Um, and there's a worker there sort of tending to the creature. Uh, Aki, mm-hmm. 
I would love you to play this animal keep. Um, and so uh, he, as he's walking by, he's sort of listing off the different animals and going, uh, yes, the, the famed winged like creature of, of the lake and, and like sort of <laughs> listing off what he knows. And then he comes over to you and he goes, excuse me. Um, <laughs> How can I help you? <laughs> what's, what's wrong with this creature? Oh, this creature. Oh, yes, yes, yes. We've been tending to this creature for quite some time. But unfortunately, it feels that it seems to have fallen ill with some mysterious uh, ailment. Um, no matter what, what tinctures and potions I try, it never seems to quite come out of its sickliness. Uh, it's, I, I certainly hope it's not suffering and there are no waning uh, wails or keening cries, but just uh, uh, t terrible, um, um, uh, persistent um, um, uh, uh, listlessness that seems to fatigue the poor creature. I, 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 if, if you don't mind, so, so it's been sick for a while. I'm trying to remember from my studies, I believe this is a Viren, correct? Oh, you have quite a good eye. Are you uh, somebody who is um, interested in living creatures? Living creatures, not so much as, as, as the stories they tell. A, a oh. Legend holds this creature was, was there from the beginning of, of, of all of this magic. And if it's oh, sick... Yes. The, Magus, the Magus himself brought many a creature from Umbra to... Uh, populate these lands. The Viren were among some of the first. Uh, yes, very much. Oh, indeed, indeed. Oh, if they are sick, it is indeed a bad omen. Uh, you are quite correct. Oh, this this must be documented. And, and, and as he sort of says that, his mind sort of wanders back to um, being on the road and, and, and seeing a family like uh, sort of the last time he remembers sort of seeing magic, um, there was, he was, as he was traveling towards uh, Ravenhall, there was, uh, and it blazed in his mind as clear as day, um, but one of the sorcerers uh, who was there to sort of help provide food and these kinds of things couldn't. Um, like he was sitting there trying to conjure up like, just some magic means of, of, of food. And he just remembers that. He knows the Magus is, um, Magus is dying. He knows that he's here to, to tell these stories, but it sort of hits him as he's watching this small little creature in this, this, this cage sort of curled up and, and, and moving back into the cage. And, and, and for a moment, um, he just is at a loss for words. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Perhaps I should go to the Magus himself and beg for his wisdom in treating this poor creature. You've given me so much to think about, young. Oh, what is your name? You're quite dashing. Oh, well, well thank you. Uh, uh, Darthor. Darthor, uh, Darthor, Darthor. I will remember it forever. I've instantly forgotten it. What was your name again? It's okay. And he sort of <laughs> wanders around and sort of sighs. And that's sort of the scene. Thank you, Aki. <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> that leads Amanda. Yeah, so <clears throat> um, I don't really want to go to the Rose Gardens. Uh, I'm going to okay. go. It's okay if I go to the same place, right? So it's it is absolutely okay. One of the cool mechanics of this game is that if you end up going or revisiting a place again, like you can talk about what's changed there. Maybe you go during a different time of the day. Uh, maybe maybe there's been some sort of shift in that look, like uh, in the way that location looks. Um, there there are ways that you can uh, color add color to whatever has already been established. Okay, so I'm just I'm gonna also go to the scrying pool. Um, so Fawn goes at night um, to the scrying pool because um, 
it's pretty secluded. Um, I want to interject just a moment here because one of the things that I forgot to do when I set up our first scene of the scrying pool was to even describe what the scrying pool looks like. So if you want to take that and do something ah. with that, you can. Um, yeah, so the scrying pool, it is um, actually naturally occurring. Um, no one made it. It's It's really kind of like a like a small pond um, that has, it's small, so it has no, no like bang. It's just like, like the, like the grass or the other like moss and stuff, like just kind of tucks right into it. It's, it, uh, if that makes sense. Um, and it is startlingly clear, um, despite the fact, despite what it's made of and where it is. Um, it is, not very deep at all, um, maybe maybe four feet. Um, and and like I said, it's just there's no it's there's no um, nothing built up around it or anything. It's just allowed to be where it is. So it's it's secl it's secluded in the sense that it's far away, but not in the sense that you know anything's been built around it or you know anything like that. Um, so yeah, she goes and is just kind of, just kind of staring at her reflection, uh, a little bit and thinking very clearly thinking very hard about something. Um, and the scrying pool, uh, changes a little bit and it starts to kind of ripple and, uh, it turns, it, it starts showing her um, when she, the uh, time she got that sent her to your group, um, basically. So I need someone to be basically like the head, like the head of the, uh, of the Knights of Stormguard. Anybody? All right. I'll 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 do it. Okay. Yeah. Here you go. Okay. Yeah. 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 So um, she sees herself in uh, his office, um, and just kind of goes. All right. Are you sure? Are you sure it's me you want to send? Absolutely. Who is better than you? I mean, I guess who's who's better than me at keeping magic in check? Um, I guess it's me. But I don't want to. I don't. I don't want to travel with magic anymore. I'm mm. done with it. None of us want to travel with magic, but. If this is really the end, then who better than the person who has stopped it before? Well, you we've all stopped it. I mean, we've, that's our job. Uh, yes. But when it goes awry, you know, it's just, this is all that's left. I know, I know. I. <sighs> Why don't you want to go beyond just you don't want to travel with magic. Because if it really, if it really is the end of magic, then the things that it broke can never be fixed. Hmm. And I'm not, got a couple broken things still. Um, so I'll go. I'm honor bound to go, I know, <laughs> to make sure that it dies for good, I guess. You took the words right out of my mouth. You are going to be great at this job. That is why I'm sending you. There's no doubt in my mind. 
that when the time comes at the right moment, you'll know it and you'll be there to help end it. Huzzah. Um, and she, uh, and she just nods and, uh, turns and, and, and marches out of the room. Uh, and then, uh, Fawn, yeah, Fawn's just looking at that and then just kind of like shakes her head and, uh, definitely feels, uh, very acutely that she's kind of the odd person out in this group um, and that it may put her at odds and she's just she's just weary of it she knows it's coming and i think that's it all right then i think it is time for us to move on to the next part of our journey and there are a couple of ways we can do this. Um, we can continue each taking our own turn, or if any of us would like to take control of the Magus and have the Magus move us forward into the next location, uh, they can do so. Um, the next place that we would go if we follow the dashed lines would be the Oak Hills, um, which would be our next location. So, um, is there anyone who would like to go first? Um, who is feeling? I would like to move the the uh, magus. The magus, yeah. Magus, go sorry. For yeah. So um, the magus um, is uh, a, a figure who I think. Uh, so the first thing is I, I move them there. Describe what it is and what they there they see. Right. Mm -hmm. So the way moving the Magus works is on your turn, uh, if your character is already on the map, you may opt to move the Magus instead, advancing us along the dash pass to a new, new location. Um, after moving the Magus, remove the other character tokens from the map. Then describe that location and its story prompt from the perspective of the Magus. So you don't just uh, you don't just move to a new location. I believe you also. Oh wait, wait. The 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 ending of summer is the prompt. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and then, yeah, uh, then you uh, do the story prompt from the perspective of the Magus. When you play mm -hmm. the Magus, show us where they are, what they're thinking, and how we travel together, just as you would your own character. All right. So question, I also have one question, sure. um, just to make sure I'm understanding this. So now that we're at Oak Hills, much like the bridge, the Menagerie and Rose Gardens were part of Ravenhall Hall, when you get to Oak Hills, are you choosing at dawn by firelight making camp or Harper's Road? Correct. Okay. So right. each Got location it. is is surrounded by scenes that can happen in that location. And it's usually it. about four or five. Okay. All right. So it's the end of summer and the 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 road has been long to get to the Oak Hills. The Oak Hills are sort of these long out into the distance rolling hills and some of them very large, some of them much smaller. Um, it's it, it's almost a very beautiful, very quaint place, right? Um, but one of the, the big things is that the Magus who up until uh, we all left, I don't think any of us except maybe the Raven have seen the Magus for extended periods of time. and. I believe, uh, at least in my mind, uh, the Magus uh, in this instance is sort of an older woman or, or female presenting person and um, sort of very, very slow in her movements. Though she rides a horse, uh, she, she's like very, you can see that she's getting tired from, from the journey. And here at the the edge of the Oak Hills stops to breathe in the air and listen. And that's when she realizes that the sound of, of, of the insects that mark the summer months have all died out. She looks down at the ground and there are these dead carcasses on, on the hills. Um, 
of these little bugs, which in any other time would be insignificant, but, but for her, as she's sort of feeling her, um, her own mortality with the end of, of magic, she, she becomes worried. And she, she looks over to the raven and, and, and calls, calls them over and asks, um, what, what shall we do when we get to Barley Town? I'm feeling a bit tired. I believe uh, that is a product of, of, well, the fall of magic. I think it only fitting that we travel only as your health allows, though we must, we must to a certain degree press forward as much as we can for the time grows short, Magus. Yes. What, of the, what do you think of these travelers that we have brought along? I have been observing all of them. Now, we know what, for what reason the knight is here and what her agenda is. But it is important to have a knight of Stormguard here, for there's got to be at least one person here who will do what needs to be done should it come to that. I know yes. you understand this, that in all things there must be balance. The giant, of course, I worry about more than anyone, for the fall of magic affects him and his people much more than it might affect any of the others in this land. When the power of magic leaves this place, they might also be forced to leave, and it is an undertaking I do not envy them. The crab singer is ambitious, a little bit brash. I am not entirely sure he's here for the right reasons, but I can at least trust that he will tell a story that will honor your great power and this incredible journey, dear Magus. If anyone I was glad to have on this journey with me, it is you. Um, I say we stop here for the night. And and she sort of slowly gets off the horse, picks up the one of the dead bugs, and sort of just lets it fall to the ground. Actually, Magus, I do not wish to be crass, but given that it may become difficult in the later days of this journey to find food, it might not be such a bad idea to gather up some of these insects for later for later consumption. You are Leaf. wise as always. Sorry. Leaf kind of overhears that and starts like like running his hand all along the road and like scooping <laughs> bugs. And I think uh, on that note as they start to uh, break for camp that uh, that night. We are going ahead and take uh, going ahead and taking our scheduled five to ten minute break. Um, we're gonna get up, stretch our legs here, have a have a, 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 a hydrate moment, and we should be back within the next five to ten minutes. Until then, uh, hold on to your seats. There's more Fall of Magic coming. Welcome back to Fall of Magic, everyone. I just want to say a quick thank you to everybody who has come to check out our first episode of Fall of Magic. Um, before we get started again, I just wanted to announce really quickly that we are doing a giveaway tonight through Die Hard Dice. Uh, that's right. Uh, we will be doing a giveaway. You'll be able to enter a keyword at some point when uh, our lovely uh, uh producer Dom decides to tell you all what that word is going to be and when to start it. Uh, you only have to be a follower of the channel in order to be able to take part in, the, in this giveaway. You do not have to be subscribed, though we would love your subscriptions. Um, just know that this is not subscriber locked in any way, shape or form. Um, but definitely hit that follow button if you haven't yet uh, so that you can be part of the giveaway. Um, and with that, I think that we are going to continue 
our story. So uh, we have just arrived at the Oak Hills. Uh, we now, each of us, have the opportunity to explore the area around the Oak Hills using the prompts uh, that uh, are available, which are at dawn, by firelight, making camp, and Harper's Road. Um, is there anyone for whom anything is screaming right at the, the get go? I'm gonna... I am going to go to Harper's Road, I think. And I am going to... Why aren't you going? There you go. I'm going to ask uh, Caspian to be a part of my scene. I'm going to say that we are... Um, on horseback, um, just riding next to each other, um, kind of bringing up the rear as, as I think it's like two in front, Magus two in back is kind of how I'm imagining the, the, the that, ride. That tracks. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah, they're just having a conversation. Uh, uh, Caspian. Yes. Who'd you leave in Ravenhall? Oh, well, that is a, a very direct and complicated question. Who did I oh. leave behind in Ravenhall? Well, I guess one could say I left the whole city behind for one of my duties as a raven of Ravenhall was to care for as many of them as my power allowed me to. But as for a specific someone, oh, well, ravens are tasked very early on with the uh, removal of distractions from their lives. We do not seek companionship or produce offspring as magic is something that can be born into anyone as opposed to chained to some lineage or something. That said, I, I did have an apprentice for a time. When we first heard word of the Magus's illness, my apprentice became frightened and left Ravenhall. I did not leave them behind so much as they left me, but I still sometimes feel responsible for them. It is, it is cowardly to abandon your responsibilities like that. It just, they are a coward. Well, you must not forget that many Young ravens are indeed young. Some are barely grown into their 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 adulthood. Some are as young as ten or even eleven years old. And so, I do not fault the child for running when they got scared. They left their family behind. They left their whole life behind for a power that was born into them if that they still didn't understand. If you are dedicated to a cause, to a way of life, it doesn't matter how old you are, you do not abandon it. I, yes. I certainly understand your point of view. After all, they build the folk in Stormguard to be hearty and loyal, to bind themselves to their duty. It is a quality that is not often seen in other parts of this land. I have seen many things, many things. A frightened child <laughs> that I have seen many times and each person has their own way of dealing with 
fair, fear, fair one. You ask me who I left behind. I can only surmise you ask me because the same question troubles you. Who is it that you have left behind, my child? Oh, that was, you said I was direct. That was annoyingly astute. Uh, I left a father six feet under. I left a mother who's dedicated to a cause. And I left my younger brother, currently a dog. <laughs> Do you ever get the impression that the giant does not but eavesdrop? I, I think he in part can't help it. His ears are so large. They are indeed quite large, as tall as I am. Still, you would think he would have the decorum to keep the fact that he can hear us, even though we are having a private conversation. Indeed. Also, it would serve to remind him that though I may be half his size, my sword is mighty enough. Now, 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 Fawn. You say your brother is currently uh, a dog. I imagine this was done by some nefarious magical deed. Obviously. Who was the wretch who did this to your brother? I don't know his name. I didn't ask it when I killed him. There are some who, with their power, seek to um, confuse and corrupt the gift that has been given to them. I am sorry that your brother suffered from this man's arrogance and folly. We thought that, we thought that, uh, we thought that, <sighs> We, I, we thought that if we found him and we killed him, that it would kill his magic. But it <sighs> Is that why you are here? Well, taking the Magus to Umbria, making sure that magic dies. Yeah. That's why I'm here. Good. Good. I don't know what's gonna happen. I guess he either, he either dies, he stays the same, or when the last of magic leaves this world, he will return to us, to our family. There is no way of knowing what will happen to us or to the Magus should the magic die. But I am glad that you are here, Fawn. For you may believe that you come here at cross purposes with the rest of us. But we do not know what waits for us in Umbra. We do not know whether or not magic was meant to survive. We know nothing yet, and therefore must have every option available to us, including making sure it dies, if that is what is meant to be. Well, I guess so. Anyway, I'm going to switch to the front. You do hey. that. Yes. Hey, Darthor. Come switch, come back. Come right in the rear. All right. 
Okay. And um, yeah, that's and that's that's all she wrote, yo. It's good. It's good. Also, I've decided we're just going to establish that the Magus uses all of the pronouns because we've been oh. using all of the pronouns for them. So I like it. All I like it. Yeah. Every so, pronoun can yep. be used for the Magus. We're just going to say that now. What, what <laughs> if the Magus changes? What if the, No, I'm the, totally like, down with that. Yeah, like that's cool. I like Part of it. their magic is that they are they are whatever you perceive them to be at any Ooh. given moment. <laughs> oh. That is some sick. I, I like that at a whole other level. That's like amazing. The Magus huh. is whatever you perceive them to be at any given moment, and therefore has all the pronouns. And Which possibly just means that all of, every time all of you... like the forms and shapes you could possibly imagine as well. Yeah. yeah. It, and, and like, oh, that's going to be so fun. Everyone who like describes the Magus is like very different. Like, oh, I'm so pumped. <laughs> Cool, cool, cool. Yay, we, we tripped on something interesting. I was noticing that we'd been using different pronouns for the Magus throughout, and I was like, I'm going to use this. I think this is a really cool thing that we can play with. That is excellent. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so I think now, uh, I think, um, yeah, I, I think I want to go next. Um, and, and what I think I like about the, the Oak Hills in particular is that there is like an actual kind of order to the way they've done these scenes so i'm gonna go ahead and pop on to making camp because i don't just make camp darling <laughs> okay um <laughs> okay so uh we've reached something that looks a little different from the things that we've touched on before and that is that beneath making camp there is a list and these lit this list is called traits. So not only am I setting up a scene here without a prompt specifically, but I am going to then add one of these traits to my character um, as something that is is something about them. Um, and I'm or not someone the only else. one. Or you could have you could have ascribe it to one of us too, not just yourself. I can. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yes, yeah, I yeah. see that in the parentheses. So story prompts with a plus symbol are traits. After describing the scene, select one of the traits listed. And describe how that is true about one of the players, yours or that of another player. Um, and then uh, write the trait down on that character's card or notes or wherever it is a thing. So um, as the sun starts to get very close to dipping beneath the horizon, we come upon a small hutch of trees. Um, and this is, these are old growth trees. Like there are big, thick, gnarled, like trunks that sort of twist up from the earth and like the roots kind of bulge and, and, and like dive and dip and like explode again from the earth. And like, it is a very like kind of twisty, brambly kind of thick, hutch of wood and it's probably not more than like somewhere between 20 to 50 trees but because they're so big and they're so old like the the the, the hutch of trees seems incredibly large and like they're all these very very old oaks kind of um uh, clinging to the side of some hills um and uh one of the big gnarled roots uh just happens to be large enough to like sort of set up a camp underneath like we can fit everybody beneath there we can do a fire we can set up a couple of tents um and have a little bit of like structural coverage uh underneath this route um uh you note that the raven doesn't contribute much in the way of physical labor to setting up the camp but every now and again you'll see the wind sort of ruffle through their feathers and like their their hands don't move they're they're their their lips don't move but like when the wind catches their feathers and there's like this little iridescent like sheen uh to them as the magic flows through their body and like suddenly a tent is like standing uh erect or uh, a spark has been uh tindered in the in the fire pit uh little things like that um as they sort of magically assist um and the three words that I have are wealthy, cunning, and kind. Um, and I would like to attribute uh, cunning 
to our crab singer, um, Darth, uh, uh, Darthor. Um, I, I'm very interested to see what you decide to do with that as a, as a character trait. Um, but yes, um, I think that I don't think I, I, I want to do much in the way of a scene here. I, I really just kind of want to establish what the area looks like. And if anybody else wants to come in here and like do something with making camp, you're more than welcome to. But I, I think that the scene is that they all collectively work to a certain degree to start setting up camp. Um, you, uh, maybe we can go around and, and talk about the different ways people like contribute to building the camp. Um, so how, how does, uh, how does um, Leaf uh, help build, help make camp? Um, I would say that Leaf most likely um, is kind of like, you know, he's very big and very used to the woods. So kind of clears out all the ground, just kind of sweeps his arms across the ground and clears all the dirt and twigs for for setting up tents and grabs a kind of number of large rocks and builds a quick fire pit and kind of does these large, broad sweeping things to get everything ready, but has no kind of ability for small dexterity or handling of anything, you know, fine. So it's just kind of these big mo mo motions of kind of getting things prepped. Cool. Uh, how does Darthor contribute to making camp um i think darthor definitely talks a lot <laughs> to every single person um and what i imagine is that he he spins these fanciful tales of all of these great people that he's met and, and some of the like lower guards who i imagine are, are are helping tend to the to the camp sort of listen to him and are like oh yeah and uh they they actually work sort of the jobs that he was assigned um, just because uh, he wants to be writing and has to, like, he, he goes on and on on how if he's not able to spend the time to write, then like, it, you know, it won't, it won't get done. And so uh, he, he's able to fool some people. But um, one of the big things that I think he does is at, at night when everyone is around the campfire, he starts beginning to tell these tales of uh, like, the very beginning stories of of what he has heard of of magic, um, and of, I, of I'm going to make a, a specific request, mostly because you just brought it up. Yeah. There is a scene in here called by, "By Firelight," and I would love for you to continue to like expound upon the stories by by choosing that scene. Like, I know we don't have game masters or anything like that, and like <laughs> you're obviously free to tell me go fuck yourself. I'm not going to do what you tell me. Um, uh, but I, I, I would love to see that actually like fleshed out into like, like a, a proper, like by fire, like spooky, nice campfire scene, uh, later on, if you'd like to. Yeah. So. Yeah. Oh, do, okay. Sing me a song, little I, I'm not singing. There is singing here and I can't <laughs> sing, but, uh, I'm not going to make up a spontaneous song. Make up uh, a song, little brat. Yes. About, I, mean, I don't before, even... before we move to your scene, like yeah. scene proper though, I'd love to know how, yeah how Fawn contributes to making camp. Oh, um, she just immediately just starts building tents, just starts hammering stakes into the ground, just starts very efficiently uh, getting everything set up, basically. <laughs> oh. cool. cool, 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 tight. All right, so yeah, go ahead, Randy, take it away. <laughs> They just like put you right in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I kind of did this to myself. I should have known. Um, so, uh, first, uh, the scene. Everyone is around the fire. Uh, there's sort of that that crackle that a live fire has that sort of like heightens the mood of the scene. And he begins to tell the tale of this a, a small creature that that sort of was born out of the ether of magic in this realm. Um, this creature splits into two and becomes sort of the light and the dark of the world. And that is where, uh, where sort of the story begins. And as he sort of looks off into the distance, he says that the first human in recorded history 
or creature looking over at the giant um, mm. was the mages. And though the mages has been around for thousands and thousands of years, their magic came from this very small creature. You see, one day, as they were wandering through the woods, they came across a serpent. That serpent, possessed by the demon of darkness and evil, he tried to lead them astray, to lead them down the path of wrong. And in that moment, a spark from the good in the world, the peace, the love, spoke to their heart. And in that moment, they were able to cast the very first flame um, that sort of drove that dark serpent away. Now, that, that flame, many say, still resides within the heart of the mages. And it was taken originally from the land of Umbra. If that flame were to go out, all that we know in this world is in peril, or oh, so the legends say. You see, there are roads we have paved with, paved with magic. There are hopes and dreams. And there are dark, dark evils as well. He says that looking at the, temp, uh, at the storm guard. But he says, without magic, our balance will never be the same. And life as we know it will end. And he says, for there are many magical beasts that would disappear. So we go off to reignite that flame, or so the legends say. And he sort of uh, gets back into his seat uh, and, and sort of dusts himself off, thinking that he has done sort of what he has trained to do, which is relay these stories. How much truth is in them, he does not know. Yeah. I, I would say that while that is happening, the Magus is kind of like sitting on the edge of the fire, not really with the group, but kind of, you know, like pretending to sort of be nodding off. And they're clearly like listening very attentively to this story. And I would say that, that Darthor notices a number of times where the Magus is nodding along as though to agree with something that sounds kind of wildly far-fetched. But that there are also moments where the Magus is sort of like checking out, but that, that, that there are a few moments where what should be myth is possibly true. So who hasn't gone? You, Max? I have I have not gone yet. Um, I have a quick question in regards to gameplay. Um, do we have to do all of the th prompts that are in a location? Okay. Then I think I'm going to move the Magus down to Bali Town. Down, down to Bali Town. Do, 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 do. Uh, all right. Uh, okay, heading down to Barley Town. The hospitality of the Barley Lord. Uh, so, as we ride in to see Barley Town, which has sent no one to aid in the Magus' uh, great journey, everyone is like a little on edge because, under normal circumstances, you would think that the most important person in the world calling for the most important quest in the world would get some reactions. Um, as we kind of ride up, the Magus motions to us to, to draw back and slowly rides their, their horse up to the front of the line. The doors to Barley Town are closed. It's got a large kind of wood fortified fence all running all the way around it. Sort of like an old timey, you know, a fort like you would see in the Old West or something like that. And the doors are closed, and standing on top of the front gate are 20 archers. 
the magus stops in front and looks up at these archers who all have their bows pointed at them and kind of just opens their arms and lays their head low and waits and all of these archers realize they can't fire right none of them have it in them and slowly one by one they just put down their bows and with that the magus looks up and the doors to the fortress slowly open and there is a messenger who steps forward and says oh uh, our apologies we didn't know it was you of course the magus and all who are with them are more than welcome in our town please come in and kind of steps back with a little bit of trepidation and leads the way and the magus turns back to the group and motions for them to go forward um as to the inside of barleytown i have no idea uh so we'll make that up as we go we have a lot of options in Barley Town. So many. We have the Inn of the Axe and Fiddle, the Farmer's Market, Oak Island, the Old Abbey, Swine Hill, and Matilda's Farm. Um, I think that I would like to go first this time. And I would like to go to Matilda's Farm. Um, Matilda's farm, um, is, Matilda's farm is a large sprawling, uh, estate almost. Um, it is obviously a land that goes back in Matilda's family for generations. It is very well kept, um, very well maintained. Uh, it stands as, as sort of a, um, a symbol almost within barley town of like the longevity of this place um it provides i think a lot of what the um the town uses as it's fo like for food and for sustenance um and is probably actually so large and so prosperous that it even exports outwards into uh adjoining uh areas uh if necessary um, Matilda herself is a large, boisterous woman of about maybe 45 years old. Um, she is, uh, no longer married. She's a widow, but has, uh, um, a few, uh, strong, strapping children, um, between the ages of 10 and 16. Um, she started having children quite young, um, uh, but, um, has since then had, I want to say she has five kids, all of them hardy farm hands and very, uh, very well equipped to do their jobs. Um, mixture of genders. They all look exactly alike. No one can tell <laughs> anyone in this family apart. I love it. The, I'm already the, in love with the, this family. The blood is real strong in this family. <laughs> um, there are often jokes that perhaps this uh, Matilda's stock uh, deri like um, comes from dwarves. Um, they're not a very tall family, um, all very like strong and hale and hearty. Um, but the the whole fact that you can't tell any of them apart is why there are rumors that perhaps Matilda's like lineage is perhaps in like a, a, a small folk uh, dwarves or or. Um, little people of a uh, little folk of the of this of the area um but yeah uh i am headed there um to speak with matilda about provisions for the journey 
And if somebody would like to play Matilda, I actually kind of want to see Max play Matilda because I feel like, yes. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Let's good. see. Right. Matilda. Uh, I mean, if you want to play one of Matilda's strapping young kids, I here <laughs> for that as well. Let's huh? let's see how things develop, shall yeah. we? Uh, so the the prompt is what she thinks you need. So you have a lot of agency here as well, Max, um, to kind of take this in a fun and interesting direction. Um, okay. Right. Um, um, is the lady of the house here? I wish. The door just kind of oh. whips open before you can even get halfway through it. Aye, she's here. Oh. What do you need from us? Oh, great Matilda. Please excuse my intrusion. I am a raven of Ravenhull by the name. I can see what you are, la. You come in. You get out of there. The air is a mess out there. It's no good. You come inside where there's some smoke and some fire and a bunch of loud screaming kids. That'll put your blood pumping. Get in here. Get in here, Raven. Uh, it is good again to see you, Matilda. It has been some time, though you might not remember me. You were but a young lass the last time I saw you. Me? Not remember you? How often do you think I see bird folk coming around my farm? Oh, true enough. True enough. I have come to speak with you of a most important matter. I already know what you need. You need food and provisions. You maybe need some weapons. And you need five strapping folk from my family take you through them rough and tumble world you're in. Because I'll tell you right now, they've driven me half mad, so there may as well be your problem. Weapons? Ooh. Weapons! Ma! Ma! We're weapons? Ah, your weapons. You've been cutting me to pieces your entire life. Ma! Ma <laughs> say I'm a weapon! <laughs> I go out back and beat each other to death, you damn bludgeons. Ha 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 You're gonna lose again. <laughs> now, you're gonna lose this time. I oh, see that... Again. I see that not much has changed in the dynamic of this family. I remember you got into quite a few scuffles with your siblings, too. <laughs> yeah. And now, you see any of them left trying to stake a claim on the farm? No. So, <laughs> I'll tell you one thing that's changed. I won. Have you been then, Bird? Oh, well, I am on a perilous journey to the land of Umbra. Aye. I have the Magus with me to go on that journey. Aye. You've got the it Magus is, with you. It is curious, Matilda, you mentioned five strapping children coming along with this ominous journey. None of the folk of Barley Town answered the call to go on this journey with us. And I'm curious as to whether or not you might have heard some scuttlebutt as to why that has happened. Well, there's been talk. It's mostly that. Uh, well, there's been talk. And then there's been a lack of talk, if you know what I mean. I think I can gather it, as I feared many people are starting to become privy to what is happening in Raventown. I you mean to tell me that the people of Barley Town are afraid. Well, I wouldn't say afraid. We're a hearty group, you know. But I would say that, um, well, we don't like to fight. I'm suddenly Irish. <laughs> Don't like to fight a losing cause. Do you think that the journey we go on is about winning or losing? We're simple folk here in Ballytown. Fair enough. We're fairly cut and dry as far. Hmm, indeed, I see that is plain. But you're not wrong. Food, provisions, I'm not entirely sure about weapons, but whatever you can spare for a fair price, I will take off your hands. Aye, aye, Raven. There's no price for you and your Megas. You've paid it over a thousand times. And I'll tell you this much. The Barley Lord may say, do this, do that. 
but not in my goddamn farm. On my farm, I made the rules. You stay here. You take care of yourselves. And I'll send you off with everything you need. Good lass, as always, Matilda. I'll do my best. Hmm. Now, I see a giant. I see a knight. I see a damn crab singer with you. Yes. But are you trying to tell me that the magus is that five-year-old girl picking her nose outside my house? If that is how you <laughs> see her, then that is what she is. Jesus. If that's been the magus this entire time, I swear. It's astonishing that anyone's even had faith in you this long. Well, perhaps you will see her differently in the morning. <laughs> yeah. She'll be five years old in a day picking her nose outside my house. Can okay, hear you. <laughs> precocious as always. Precocious as always, Matilda. But I thank you for your hospitality, as it seems your Bali, Bali Lord has quite lost his sense of his. Bye. And a scene. Ooh, that was fun. Ooh. That was good. Yeah. Who wants to go next? Uh, I do, but only oh. if Max doesn't mind if I use him again. Oh, no. Oh, I'm I'm here to be used. That okay. sounds good. I got um, you. <laughs> yeah, a simple, sure, it's fine, would have sufficed. But Sorry. this is Max. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm trying to my little token person. Um, so I'm going to say that, um, that Fawn doesn't have any interest really in being in the town. So at the moment, so it's just, is walks up, walks up to Swine Hill, um, and finds, uh, Leaf there, if that's cool. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, she walks up behind. I killed my first, I killed my first magic user here, right on this hill. Magic user? Or magic creature? A kind of, kind of magician that sets houses on fire in the middle of the night, with the people still in them. Uh, apologies for one second. Can you all hear that the fire yes. alarms are going off in my house? Fire alarm. Oh, no. Okay, please make sure it's not on fire. I don't think I'm on fire. But, but please go and check. Please go and give check. Give me one second to make sure that doesn't happen. Sure you guys could all be in fire? for a real yeah. show. Oh, God. <laughs> we oh, no. hope not. One moment. Yeah. Yes, please, please take care of your house. In, oh, in the meantime, please meet my brother. <sighs> Oh, the cutest Aww. brother. Are you sure you want to turn him back into a human? And, I don't know. Oh, do I? And if he could talk. Oh. It's the buffer. Hey, buff. Everybody, please, please say hello to the team mascot. Hell, team the captain. The cutest dog in the whole Buffy. world. The cutest, most Truly neurotic cutest. dog in the universe. We <laughs> love her. I miss Facts. her so much. Facts. Oh, my little soft baby. Um. Okay, well, all right. Well, I assume Max will be fine. There's probably yes. nothing on fire. But, you know, uh, do, you, do you interlude? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you want to pause your scene until he returns and, and maybe let Randy go? Or, nope, here he is. Oh. Speaking of the devil, here he comes. Just okay. Say <laughs> House not Everything on fire? Cool, dude? Oh, oh, no, 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 no. Just, um, just my wife's on fire. The house is fine. Uh, My wife also oh. should not be on fire. <laughs> We're all good. Uh, it was just some chicken. Uh, <laughs> oh, no. It's fine. Okay. Uh, let's see. Where right. were we? Uh, uh, oh, yeah. Mag oh, <clears throat> lighting fires. Right. Wow. Hilariously. Uh, timed up Prophetic. well. Prophetic. Talking about, we were talking about battles. Magic. So. You tell me. You killed your first magic user here. Yeah. Just like I said, went around setting fires with people still in them. Had no 
no remorse, no intent of stopping. Mm. When that happens, they send us. And you were a knight of storm guard then? I've always been a knight of storm guard. <laughs> it seems right. You carry that with you. And how many since? Some of some of us keep count. I don't. Oh. It's it's gauche. They are lives. Even though it is our job to end them, they are still lives. They are people. They have souls. They are not notches on a scabbard. No. No, they are not. <clears throat> and how many will you have to forget when magic dies in this world? There are thousands of my people. Will you not count us all? I don't understand. We will die when magic is gone. You are certain? Enough. We have, this is world has not been without magic before. No. Who knows what it shall become when it is gone? Well, would you take the risk? I have no magic. I am not at risk. Would you but risk yes, me? It is out of my hands. What do you expect me to do? Single-handedly keep magic in this world? I have not the ability nor the desire. But no. nor do I wish you harm. You know... They call me Leaf because I am a reminder to them that everything falls. That's true enough. I, I find it that I am not often reminded myself. So this journey, this entire journey is one long reminder mm. that do not wish that fate on anyone, and I am sorry that it has fallen on your shoulders. But I cannot, and I will not, pretend that the loss of magic would not bring me some measure of peace and finality. Maybe so. I would very much like to see a dog turn into a man. I saw it happen the other way. Not really as fun. <laughs> no. I imagine not. It would well, be weird to see him sprout all that hair. <laughs> this is gone quite an unexpected direction. Hmm. Regardless, I have found you where I intended to come and reminisce. Well. Shall we dine? Hmm. Yes. Shall I carry you? I think not. Then I'll walk I will slowly. I have to. <laughs> <laughs> I'll run if I have to. Wonderful. Cut, cut, cut yeah, it. Nice. Good. All right, so uh, we have Leaf scene and we have uh, Darth scene to go. And of course, you can do like Max did and skip this along if you want to. You can do something here if you're feeling, feeling chipper. I've got something. I've got something. 
Uh, and I would love you to be a part of it, Aki, with Caspian. But uh, okay, okay. What? Uh, so first, um, it is I imagine midday. The uh, the Magus and and them have started heading towards Matilda's farm, a and you sort of notice um, Darthor sort of dipping and ducking out of the way, trying to be sneaky and get get into a place with lots of people. And so the farmer's market is bustling. It is full of every manner of person and creature, big, small. It's filled with lots of noise, um, a very easy place to go unnoticed. And in this place, um, he is sort of waiting around a specific stall. Um, he's a bit impatient and uh, a man comes, he hands the man a tiny scroll, and then the man walks away. And so right after that, you, uh, for some reason, decide to uh, confront him. Young Darthor, what are you up to? Hmm? Uh -huh. Nothing. None of your business. Why are you here, Raven? I was not aware that I was beholden to Matilda's farm for the rest of the day. And I was not aware that I was being followed either, but it seems that... Oh, you were not being followed. I just so happened to see you not as subtly as you thought you were doing something that perhaps you feel you uh, ought to have been able to do subtly. That being said, I do have a bird's eye view of most things, and don't miss much. Mm, I see. Wah, wah. Well, I don't think things will be as cut and dry as you think they are. What gave you the impression that I think anything is cut and dry? I, I, I don't know what you think, but I know that you have been sort of keeping your eye on all of us. And, well, I, 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 and, and Raven, pardon me, but I do not like being followed. And I know you say you weren't. And I say otherwise. You, I'm the one with the pen, well, am I not? Indeed, you can draw me however you wish in your tales, dear Darthor. And oh. I cannot do anything to stop you from doing so. And though it pains me that you seem to have gotten an impression about me that is, well... Perhaps not entirely without reason. After all, the ravens are a mysterious lot. Who knows what we are up to at any given moment of any given day? Or at least that is what I want to hear from the people going up and down the streets whenever they see me and whisper hushedly into each other's ears. <clears throat> Anyways, while I was not following you, perhaps my spirit was drawn to yours. What? What do you think of that notion? I think it fair enough, Raven. I am, for your information, not trying to do anything to your precious Magus. Rather... I never I'm, assumed anything yes, of the sort. Yes, I wholeheartedly believe that. We know the stories of Ravens in the, in the Crab Singer College, of course. We have heard of many of the betrayals that you guys have done in the past. Things that led to war. Words on the, on the wings of other birds. We know. And I am here to keep an eye, to make sure that there is no meddling here. It is an unfortunate thing that the ravens have so divided themselves along black and white vines. You do not have to trust me if you do not wish to trust me. I hope that my actions will speak for themselves. 
I understand that you, like many, blame the ravens and most magicians for the ails and troubles of this, of this land, and you are not entirely wrong. We are, after all, like you, imperfect beings, and with power comes vanity and obsession, corruption, greed. But that is that I would not that... know anything about. <laughs> Certainly not. You are most humble. If if the raven had eyebrows to quirk, they'd quirk them. Um, <laughs> um, quirk. He, he sort of looks out and goes, uh, takes a piece of paper, passes it to you. This is what I came here for. And it is uh, just some information of wandering uh, bandits in the lands um just he the college of bards obviously have lots of information and people watching the roads and so as he's been asked to travel them he has gotten a little bit of information i wasn't quite sure if i would share this or not but and it is still your news to share young darthor I'm okay. Um, I've got what I want, which is lots of stories. Um, did you hear that the Knight of Stormguard's brother was a dog? And I he goes, have, uh, starts tapping his notebook. I have heard something of the like, but it is not exactly fair to include things in your story that you were not given permission to share. That might be a touch too private, and you might want to ask the young fawn if she is all right, with such a detail being part of the story. I shall ask. Consent. Man. Always important. All right. All right. I will wait for her permission. Don't wait for it. Ask for it. If uh, you wait yes. for it, she I mean, will not give it to you. That is, that is you are right. Um, and, and he sort of nods and sort of, um, ash, uh, wanders back towards the farm, sort of still looking at you, knowing you're right behind him. <laughs> mm, that's a troublesome one, but only in his heart. All right. So is this like, okay, someone needs to move well we still have well we currently still have max's scene and he was kind oh, enough sorry. to move the magus in the last scene so if he wants yeah. to take the scene now for himself here at barleytown he's more than welcome to but if he wants to skip us along to the next thing he can do that as well i i would actually rather take the next scene in the next place if that's okay cool. all right um then i i will move uh, uh the magus this time we're gonna say that this wraps up barleytown and i am going to move us along to what is a fork in the road first. Yes. The reason why is because from here we can go in two different directions and they take us past wow. different areas of the map. Um, we have to the south, uh, the Stormguard Mountains and to the north, we have Mistwood and we have one of each uh, with us today. So I know that the two of you might have biases as to which one we should go to. No, um, you would think so. I want to go to Mistwood instead of Stormguard. Well, I really want to meet a dog. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, the funny thing is, I I feel like I saw this coming. I was like, they're not going to want to go to their own place. They're definitely going to want to go to the others. Um, oh no! Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Uh, um, so what about you? Yeah. What about you, Randy? Are you feeling Stormguard Mountains or Mistwood? Uh, I re so I do want to know more about Amanda's brother, but I'm gonna be honest. I really want to see other magical creatures in in the mist woods. Uh, and I think a few of you have played with me long enough to know exactly what kind of nonsense monster I am. I am also <laughs> hardcore drawn to the mistwood and would love to frolic amongst the magical creatures. Um. <laughs> So oh, yeah, you wanted I think... to literally meet my brother, Max. You wanted to like 
Okay. I mean, no, I mean, like, I want, I want more of your brother. backstory is what I'm saying. But like, like oh. I, I enjoy hearing your story. I'm just, no, uh, no, I think because yeah. but, Max but was I saying he wanted yeah. to be my brother. <laughs> and yeah. I was like, oh, yeah. So um, we head north then to Mistwood. Oh, what an interesting prompt. What slows you down? So the summer has started to draw to an end and the leaves are starting to change color. And one of the things that we noticed on our path towards Mythwood is the ever changing landscape. The leaves begin to turn. And with this turn, there is almost like a visible change in the Magus. No matter how you perceive them, she seems more gaunt, more tired. Um, he has a lot less energy um, and seems to move more slowly, like is needs more assistance to get on and off their horse, uh, rises slower in the morning, um, goes to bed later at night. She seems troubled. Um, and she rides up alongside a uh, leaf as they enter into the range of mistwood how do you see how do you see the magus at this time um i would say that i see the magus as a um as like a forest creature uh that that they are sort of a large, like that the horse is almost gone, basically, and that they are a large stag walking through the woods. Um, and that they kind of turn to me, and as they turn, their horns kind of like are almost fluid, like they move after the head, and like follow everything almost like when you like whip fabric through the air that everything is very kind of fluid and slow this is such a gift okay um dear giant friend we are growing closer to your home all right what do you think they will think of me when they see me this way. They will, will they see you as they see you. And they will think what we all think. You are magic incarnate. You are our savior. And they will place those weights upon you. You are most likely right, Leaf. Mm. I do not wish to disappoint the children of magic. <laughs> but I fear that even I have my time, as so many do. For you see, magic is a uh, as live as I am. And it has its season. I have mine. You have yours. Everyone in this party has theirs. That the people of Mistwood have been exempt from the trials and toils of aging and death does not mean they are exempt from this. We don't need to stop here. We can ride on. I can carry you on. They don't need to weigh you down. They don't need to bury you in their selfishness. Oh, leaf. Do you think I fear selfishness? Selfishness 
happens to us all. Do you think I want to die? No. And yet I will if that is what is required of me. All things in their time. Good giant friend. All things in their time. They won't understand that. You don't understand that. It is all right. You don't have to. And what do I do when you die? Well, I think at this point it is best not to plan too far ahead. Every moment, after all, is precious. <laughs> oh. Sure. True words from someone who's lived since the dawn of time, eh? Mm -hmm. Indeed. I think that's where we'll cut that and then we'll get into we'll get into this. Um uh, I believe Max, you said you wanted to take the first scene in yeah. in this area. And I feel like since we're in Mistwood, that absolutely makes the most sense. Uh let's see. Let me grab my little token here. Come on, friend. Let's go on a little journey. Um I'm going to go foraging, um, which is a cool oh. new mechanic that we have not run into. Yes, we have not run into this yet. So when you run across a place on the map that has a number in it, you have reached what is called a peril. And when you reach a peril, you have to roll the only dice that ever gets rolled in this game, a d6. And depending upon which number you roll, that will determine the peril you face. So if you would like to, you can roll it either in the roll 20 or you can roll oh, it physically. Um, yes. If you want to roll a d6 for us and tell us what you get. Let's roll it in, D in, uh, in roll 20. Let's let's use this app to its fullest. Digital die rollers are amazing and everyone should use Yeah, Max, them. Max blah, 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 blah. is the, the king of uh, and champion for digital dice. And he rolled a six. So for anybody who oh, might be listening yes. to this by a podcast, I don't know if this is a podcast, um, but uh, <laughs> one to two is where you are wrong. Uh, three to five is bounty of the forest and six is foxes. Now, foxes. those of you who might have been looking at the map a little bit earlier might have noticed that a fox is a potential character that can be played in this game. So I will leave that to you, Max, however you want to interpret foxes in this particular sense. I am ready to do that, obviously. This is a thing <laughs> I've clearly prepped for. Um, oh, prep for this game? Yeah, it's this is off the cuff. Okay. Um, all right. Well, for, the first prompt is the lesson you teach, and we're foraging. So I think what I would like to do is take um, Darthor with me. And I'm, we're going to head out into the woods uh, and, and try and forage for some, some food and maybe some kindling, you know, stuff to, stuff to keep us going. Um, thank you for the raid. Mm. Ooh, Yo, thank you for all the raids, everybody. Thank you. You're awesome. But, yeah, yeah. All right. All right. <clears throat> Are we done yet? Little one, we are done when we get to Umbra. Until then, everything we do is struggle and pain. Uh, Come. All right, well, show me where we go. And he kind of like looks, you know, across the distance 
and points to like a bunch of trees. There, there are fruit trees. Follow me. And he Lead kind of <laughs> starts like clomping through. And as he gets to the fruit trees, he steps and the whole ground goes out from underneath him and he falls like a solid 30 feet into a pit. Hmm. Uh, uh, That's a giant uh, pit. Uh, uh. Little one. Uh, yes. Hello. Yeah. Run. You okay? Run. 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 And um, before you can turn, like, the whole ground is, like, covered in kind of scuttling creature. You know, it's almost like the ground is, like, rippling and moving. It's not underneath, but it's camouflage. Like, things are scuttling across the ground. like, And they surround the whole pit, including you, and swoop up. And what it is is sort of these, like, half-human half animal hybrids and they keep kind of shifting like they have paws and then hands or like a humanish face and then a fox face and they're these shape-shifting foxes and they're constantly in a state of kind of moving between who they are That's some kitsune shit right there i love it yeah yeah very and 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 Arthur sort of is backing up like closer. He's right on the edge of sort of this thing. Um, there's not really many options of where to run. Wanna be a fox with me, Amanda? Do it up, be foxes. You mute it. You mute it. What are we doing? We're being fo- what are the what we are, are, are these we, we have shifting forest foxes. <laughs> yes, we have trapped ourselves a giant and we have now cornered Darthor and we have pit surrounded. Ah, it looks like we have a nice tasty morsel on our plate for dinner and an appetizer to go with. Oh, that one is so big. Yeah, I haven't seen any of his ilk in a long time. I suppose his flesh is as sweet as the crab he carries on his back. <laughs> It just means that all of his all of his sweetest bits are even larger, more oh, to enjoy. Indeed. And th- did you see the size of the one that fell in that pit? Ah. Oh, he's he is done for. We need not worry about him. Last I'm going to go nip. I'm going to go nip at his ankles. Oh, as, okay. soon, as soon as Darthor hears that, he pulls the shield and sort of looks at how big the shield is to how wide the hole in the ground is, right? And it's like, a, 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 it's not going to cover the whole thing. But maybe if he does it on the edge of the circle, he could like hold himself down with the shield sort of up and him like attached to the shield. <laughs> she's not, yeah, I would say like, she's not trying to kill you. She's just being yeah, having he's not having that. You're... He's not messing with that. <laughs> you, have to, you have to wait until he's pro- you have to wait until they're properly seasoned. If you just go nipping at them while they're still raw, it won't taste as good. But when they're when they fear, it's delicious. Oh yes, that does do something fun to the meat, doesn't it? Fear gives it that nice pungency. Mm. Hello, 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 meals. What has brought you here today as such a Wait. sweet offering? Does it? Does this... We follow the Magus. Yeah. And you should not be standing in our way. Right. You are in our home. No, yeah. no, no. The Magus is here. You have to be courteous and, and, and nice. Are you the Magus? Ah. Uh, yes. I know you are not, fool. How do you know that? Huh? Have you met I, the Magus before? I have indeed. And what was the Magus to you then? The Magus to me. 
and you can tell like she's trying to come up with like a good lie. Um, the Magus was no lies, Fox. I know your way. The Magus. And I will have no part of it. <laughs> yes. No ask me a question. Do you want me to answer it or not? <laughs> Any answer you would give would be a lie. Then why did you even ask the question? If you are truly with the Magus, then they will not allow you to be eaten, will they? No. Then then we could just have fun. Fun, 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 fun. And if the Magus comes and intercedes on your behalf, then we will believe you and set you free. If the Magus comes and intercedes on our behalf, you will be dead. The Magus is not cruel. Everyone needs to eat. You came to our home. This is my home. Uh, This specific area? No, this is my home. I live here. You're trespassing. Then we will go. We we, will what? And we will go. And leave the small one. He looks like he'll have, he's fun. We'll have fun, right? Much yeah. fun. Easy. So much fun. Don't you want to stay and learn more about the foxes, Krasner? No, no, no. Give you many stories to tell. How fast can you run? <laughs> oh. go. go, let's find out. Go. And he starts running. <laughs> um, I think I'm going to call it there, where the foxes yeah, are yeah, yeah, chasing yeah. after poor Darthor so and uh, and have left Leaf behind. <laughs> cool, yo, cool, yo. All right. Um, let's. See. I would like to go if that's cool. Yeah, go for it. Go for it. Um, I where did my little? There it is. Oh yeah, we forgot to move them off the map when we. When we move to the Magus, womp womp. I am going to go camping. Um, Ooh. The prompt is, what runs out? Uh, I'm going to need you, Randy. Oh. Um, okay. So Running, screaming, hauling <laughs> out. <laughs> no, I think this is, this is either slightly earlier or a bit later. Um, and uh, you open up on, on uh, Fawn grabbing uh, Darthor by the throat and pushing him up against a tree. You want to sing about what? Uh, I I just wanted permission to tell your story about your brother. How do you even know my story? I didn't tell it to you. No, 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 you did not. And I wish I did not know it. And yet you want to use it for your own personal gain. No, 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 it's not for me. It's it's to to honor all of the of all of the people in in, in this who ha- who are part of this journey, right? That's what I'm here for. That makes no sense. No, 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 no. You, you you're here, and that's part of who you are. That is what people care about in a great epic. I do not wish to be known. I do not wish to be part of an epic. And my patience, my patience is running out. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, that, and, and I, 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 I can change it. I could make um, um, the, 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 the guard. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> oh, my. Stop crying. <laughs> Have some. So is there no steel in your spine? Not at all. Not even the soft kind. Steel. I, I, I don't know. Maybe maybe um, some 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 copper. Darthor, or... stand up straight. Stop blubbering. Ask me for permission, and then when it is denied, leave without complaining or bringing yourself low. Uh, okay. And if I catch you singing, speaking, or otherwise about my life, I'm going to end yours. Are we clear? Crystal. Excellent. 
All right. I'm going to ask now. Can I use your story in my my tale? No. Right. How has this not gotten through yet? No, you, no. you said to ask you and then not to forget. <laughs> <laughs> and and she just like it just like squeezes just a little bit tighter. Or like do not. How about this? Do not let my name nor any of my kin pass your lips from this point until the day you die. Say yes or no. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> you can feel free to buy me an ale, but otherwise get the hell out of my sight. One ale coming up. I couldn't help it. When you when you said that up, I was like, what runs out? My patience. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's so good. That was ah, uh, Amanda's just that was fun. playing characters <laughs> like these. Just so good. Being uh, angry. I would like to take the next scene. I would like um to uh oh, I'm really torn. These are both very good. Um I think I want to do uh by moonlight and i would like actually to run into another giant perhaps from uh mm. from leaf's um like tribe of giants um uh anyone who would like can can play it um you can fight amongst yourselves if you want. i need a break <laughs> yeah you take a break um this Maybe, maybe uh, Max, I guess, if you want to play another one of your, your yeah. folk. Um, but I think that, I think that um, Caspian has been taking a long walk. I think this is towards the end of the night, like the end of the day, the moon has started to rise in the sky. The, like the, the stars have just started to come out. Um, there's a kind of a very soft glow from like, what little of sun, like little sunlight is still left. Um, and the, these woods, I like to think these woods are a lot like maybe La Florian, like, you know, just birch and like, like white kind of trunked trees that like kind of stand apart. And the, 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 the ground is covered in like beautiful leaves and just very, very idyllic. Oh, um, and I would say that who these trees remind you of is our prompt. As yeah. you're, as they're sitting there, um, Caspian is noticing that as they kind of look at the trees, every once in a while, they kind of like like move wrong there's something wrong it's almost like you know in the distance like the trees are like a little out of focus or like shifting or something's something's kind of going on excuse me okay. sorry <laughs> beat to, uh, duck um so mm, curious mm. Strange that the trees should shift so. As, um, if my eyes are not mistaken, me, um, and perhaps I think they are not. You remind me, good tree, of an old friend of mine I've not seen in quite a long time. Quite a long time. But then I haven't left Ravenhall in quite a long time. Um, Mist wood has changed since last I was here. But will you tell me, good tree, that continues to move so strangely who you might be? Mm -hmm. And the kind of like the tree sort of like starts to come into clearer focus and the head dips down from below the leaves and the, and the branches and looks you in the eye. 
Hi. Me. Yes, you. Ah, at last you come into focus, good old friend, or at least perhaps new friend. I'm not no. sure I've met you before. No, you know. I'm the root. Ah, root. Yes, I am familiar with your name, root. Why do you wander the woods at this hour of the day? I heard travelers here with the Magus. Yes, your kin Leaf is with us. Oh, I have not seen him for quite some time. I have a feeling he's gotten himself into a bit of a hole. I Leaf, not my concern. Oh. You? Raven? You, my concern. And how can I help you, Root? Things bad round here? Mm. Foxes gone wild. Oh. Now that is news. I thought the foxes had settled finally. No. Then. They feel it like we do. Death coming. Got them riled up. Taste for blood. That is unfortunate to hear. What measures have been taken to uh, curtail this behavior? Branches hang with the bodies of foxes across this wood. But they don't care. Warning set. Runes made in blood. But they don't care. Perhaps... The Magus can speak to them. If not, is war? We have uh, too many things happening right now to risk war between the gentle folk of Mistwood. I will speak with the Magus. Hopefully they will be able to help you. Aye. Thank you, Raven. Of course. If it will stop a war, I believe that the Magus will be keen to assist however they can. And next time we see, you call me old friend. Indeed, Root. I would like that. Aye. They And they kind of stand back up and their head goes up into the branches and they wander off and sort of get lost off into the trees. Cool. All right. That's me. I like this game a lot, y'all. It's making me really happy. It's so, really cool. All right. So wild design. It's kind yeah. of lovely. Yeah. Guess whose turn it is. It it's is mine. <laughs> yours. Um, but uh, I, I actually want this to be pretty short. So uh, not really so much as like a big scene that everyone's in, um, but rather, and I got to find my, my little token. Yeah, it's still down in Harley Town. Yeah. yeah, look at that. So I'm putting it where it says camping because I want to do what runs out because basically Darthor mm -hmm. is running for his life. Uh, <laughs> and, and there's just like, He's passing trees and he's like stumbling over and the, the foxes are stopping and, and letting him get away for a moment just to chase him a bit farther. And then he comes to the edge of a cliff. Oh, jerks. <laughs> and, and he's like, okay, if, if, if you've got me, do what you will. You know, he's not very much fun. Bit of a sniveling coward, don't you think? 
I resent that. It probably tastes like stringy. Gets stuck in your teeth. I, I do not. That. I taste delicious, probably. And see, now Are you sure? advocating to be eaten, it's making it too easy. This isn't very much fun. What if I just bite his ankles and just get a little bit of taste? You won't be able to run them. away. No! Ah! He's not uh -huh. like... He's not like us. He won't bite his own leg off to get away. He'll just scream. I'll do it, though. No, 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 no. I need my leg. Do it's... you? I do, I do, I do. Why, you have two. No, no, no. I need both of them. It's called dancing, and I like to do it. I don't think you need to and, dance. And you know what? No, no. You can hop. That's the, a dance. The magus... We'll come and find you. Me and my friend back there, we're going, we're with the Magus. We did, that was not a lie. I mean, what do we care of Magus? Is? <laughs> what Mist do you care? Have you seen Mistwood lately? No, we just got here. Oh, that's a shame. And as you're talking, a kind of wildly succulent looking pig walks into the middle of all of this from the perspective of the foxes. The foxes see a wildly succulent looking pig. That one won't talk back at least. No, no, no. You don't want to do it. You don't want to do it. You'd rather I eat you instead? I mean, no, I would not. Then Leave us be. We're hungry. Lunch. Lunch for pig. Yeah, they def I definitely run after the pig. And as each of you sinks your teeth into the pig, you kind of freeze. And everything for the foxes just kind of goes very still. And you hear a voice that just like kind of drills into your brains. That just says, peace. Peace. Oh, 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 and I don't think that the, the the fox I'm playing says anything else. They kind of like you know quiver with fear and kind of shrink away and then like dash into the woods, like away from the no longer perceived by them as a pig, but as an actual like large glowing dark bird. Um, uh, the pig no longer looks like a pig to them but what they've always imagined the Magus actually looks like. Yeah, I think I think mine, like, mine's an ankle biter, has, like, uh, <laughs> teeth around the ankle and is listening and is more just, like, fine. Fine. Just, like, if a fox can stomp, just, like, stomps off. <laughs> and... and and for a moment, uh, Darth Thor just like collapses to the ground at, at the mages' feet, who looks like just a, a knight with like long, flowing, beautiful hair <laughs> and like a sword. And it's just like the most epic like <laughs> protagonist you've ever seen. And, and it's just like, oh, thank you. I will write great stories and I promise I won't ever do anything bad again. Oh, I know oh. you won't. That's why you're here. Every story must be told. Every story must be told. And he just sort of, as the mages turns and, and starts walking off, he looks and just keeps going. Every story must be told. 
and then he quivers with fear again about <laughs> and that's where I think we end. <laughs> I, Thank you for coming to my rescue. <laughs> yeah, I, Megas. I would like to move the Megas this time. Do it, do okay. it, do it, do yeah. it. Go, go, go. Okay. So right. the next the yeah. next spot on our on our map would be the Hall of the Woods. Hall of the Woods, the hospitality of the Grey Rangers. Um, oh. I am going to say that the Grey Rangers um, are fairly uh, reverent, kind of, to the Magus. Just so if you guys, if you end up playing some parts here, um, they are all very happy to welcome the Magus. Um, but I think they're... By the time, I think it's 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 pouring rain, like it's one of those like big you know forest storms. Autumn, autumn um, yeah, that's just like just just pouring and coming down on everyone, and um, the sun is setting. It's been raining all day, and finally, our little procession um, approaches the. Hall of the Woods um, weren't necessarily planning on actually going there, but the current situation kind of means we have to. So the Magus um, gets helped off of their horse um, by uh, by Darthor, I think, helps the Magus down. Uh, will you Will you stay with me, please? Oh, oh, of course. I'm I'm tired. I'm very tired. I'm sorry, but no, I do. No. We must we must make a a proper greeting. We must make a proper greeting. So, let us let us present ourselves to the Grey Rangers. Right. Please announce us. And out of his pocket pulls what looks like a, or out of his like bag, pulls what looks like a trumpet or like a similar type thing and goes burr, 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 burr. And yeah, and the Magus just kind of starts. It's like, well, it's not exactly what I meant, but uh, some good good thinking there, uh, Darthor. Ah, I see that you have finally reached us. Welcome to the Magus and their illustrious party. Yes, we are. We are what, a, what they would call a, a ragtag band of travelers, but we all are on the same, on a different journey to the same destination. It is good to see you. It is very good to see you again, Magus. It has been a long time since your presence graced our halls, and we could not be more honored to have you here again. I regret that this may be the last time that I grace your halls. However, I will enjoy it just as much as I do every time, for being here is like being in a second home to me. You will find that your chambers are just as you left them. Ah, I thank you. Is there a place for my traveling companions to stay as well? Do you have room? We have room for all, but we must adjust for the size of your giant. He is ah. one of the larger folk to visit us, though we should have a rather large uh, hollow in which he can reside that he might find quite comfortable. I'm sure he will be fine. He he prefers the outdoors anyway. Even all of this rain suits you all right? It does not. It, it weighs me down. Then we should get you in front of a warm fire with a cup of mulled wine in your hand. Nothing sounds better than that. Let us, let us do that. Um. And everybody just gets all cozy in the very friendly uh, Hall of the Woods with the Grey Rangers. 
Um, what do we think, um, just because I don't really have any particular ideas, like what do we think the Grey Rangers, like what do they stand for? Like what is their job? You know what I mean? Like what's mm. their purpose? Yeah. What do we think? I, I kind of, so if the Storm Guard is particular, is specifically um, kind of tasked with the control of magic, like magic users, like the policing yeah. of magic yes. within yeah. within the town. I I want to say that the Grey Rangers are perhaps like a, almost like maybe like um, a monk like order devoted to kind of the um, the development of like education within the land. Like they work like kind of in tandem with uh, with the mages to sort of like like spread. Uh, like knowledge and education and and um um are they I like mean, national parks employees but for magic yeah i kind of <laughs> like that idea like, oh, they're, that's they're, such a, now i have i picture them perfectly now i can you know like this oh my goodness yeah they're, they're so they're, eager and happy and like oh. yeah it's like their whole their whole thing is just like you your uh the storm guards are tasked with the policing of magic and the rangers are tasked with the protection of it essentially like mm. they are kind of the stewards of 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 um of of that um nice they are they are they they are mostly called rangers because they range like far and wide to do this but like they are not rangers in i think the most traditional sense perhaps mm -hmm. like right. not in the way that like we that. often yeah not in the way we often think of fantasy rangers Mm -hmm. okay i'm down with that yeah so yeah that yeah, sounds great that is that is where we are staying uh just a very quiet uh idyllic little place in the woods while we wait out this giant storm what does it look like oh what does their hall look like I like that so in in the art here it's like kind of depicted as like this thatched hut kind mm. of sort of thing but i like the idea of maybe like like going in, in like not exactly like divot, like pivoting completely off of that, but I almost like to like the idea of it being like, like Scandinavian, like long, like long Scandinavian Ooh. hall type mm. things, like really kind of leaning into like the sort of um, uh, like, like Rohan kind of aesthetic here a little bit, but in the <laughs> woods. Rohan, but in the woods, um, is kind of the feeling like large hearths, like kind of perhaps like usually like community sleeping, but with some like private chambers for like, like more upper private times, like, yeah, private times and guests basically. But like, perhaps this is, <laughs> this is a, a community that doesn't really worry about like privacy all that much mostly because it's just a bunch of people that like wander far and wide like this this isn't a permanent home for most of them it's just the homestead mm. like the home uh, base essentially i love how good it almost functions like a barracks i guess in that sense mm. i can't believe we've gone this far like basically to the end of this game without a sex joke it feels wrong and i don't like it <laughs> i'm There's sure we can get something whole... done in the next 11 minutes it's uh, just i mean <laughs> we could but it doesn't actually... come na it's not coming naturally no one is very sexy or like it's not coming naturally. Right. getting into sexy situations uh that could change when if any of us go to the circle of the agents we don't know what that's all about but we are going to find out when we play our next session of this on wednesday of next week because it is already 10 to 10 yeah. yeah yeah so we are actually going to wrap this up here and pick it up with the scenes from the hall of the woods um and from then we will move on into the rest of our map and the end of our story um but i firstly just want to say thank you so much to everybody who came in and watched today thank you to everybody who rated uh thank you to everybody who uh gifted subs resubbed gave bits donated. we appreciate you we appreciate you so much uh we're gonna go around the horn one more time uh to find out uh, where everybody can be found, I will start uh, the opposite direction this time. Max, please tell the people where they can find you and Max. what you might be up to if anything at all. 
Um, I'm not up to a lot. I'm just trying to live my life. You know, I'm just going to kick it. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Brosis Movies. That's like brother, sister movies. And uh, you can obviously find me here every Wednesday at 7 playing amazing games with people that I love. <laughs> all of us. All of us. <laughs> that was adorable. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> Aw. All right. Randy, where can people find you? And what are you up to? Yeah. Uh, so, like Aki said, Randy Alvarenga. You can catch me on uh, Twitter at Roller Raja. That's R-O-L-L-E-R-R-A-J-A. Uh, and on here, but also uh, starting at the end of this month, a cool, new, exciting project. Uh, I don't have a date for you yet, but we're going to be playing Witches and it's going to be a horror RPG. So get pumped. Follow my Twitter if you want to know more. This is me getting pumped. Uh-huh. Amanda? Yes, hello. Um, I, again, am Amanda, uh, Amanda Powers. And you can find me on Twitter at Geek Powers. Um, please follow me if you would like to hear me talk about games and uh, baseball and the books that I read. Hooray! And lots of cute pictures of buffers. Lots of cute pictures of animals, dogs, cats, you know, yep. whatever. Um, but yeah, otherwise you you find me here on Wednesdays. And of course, I am Aki. You can find me on Twitter at Mixed Genie in a Bottle. That's M X G I N I I N A B O T T L E. My entire Twitch streaming schedule can be found on my personal channel, twitch.tv slash Shidari Aki. That's S H I D A R E A K I. Um, uh, I have a couple of shows that are on hiatus right now. Um, we just wrapped up our first season of Let's Get Wild Mount. That happens on Saturdays. Um, but. Uh, Really excited because, you know, another show that I do over here on Saving Throw Show is set to get started back up soon. So uh, look for announcements about the uh, impending sixth, sixth season of New Pantheon. Holy shit. What? Seriously? Yeah, Amazing. we've done. This is the sixth season of New Pantheon that is about to premiere. I know. Wild to me. Um, geez, Louise. Okay. Um, it's fine. My mind is slightly blown. It's fine. Uh, but goodness. Um, and then yes, starting. Thank you for reminding me. Thank you. Um, starting next Tuesday over on Indicate Twitch at 3 p.m. Pacific time, you can catch me along with my co-host, Colin Kelly, uh, also known as the spouse of one Amanda. Uh, we are going to be co-hosting a show called RP Game Changers, wherein we will be playing awesome indie games, um, uh, a tabletop RPG specifically. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. Next week, we're starting with a game called Business Wizards. <laughs> that should be a, a lot of fun. So definitely come and check out Business Wizards because it's it's gonna be it's gonna be weird and fun, and I'm very excited about it. But that's starting up next week at <laughs> Indicate Switch at three p.m. Wait, listen. So is that like? See, it's a very descriptive. It's like it tells you what it is. Like Mall Kids. We played Mall Kids last week. That's exactly what it is. Yo, I just imagined like a wizard in a business suit. I'm so, so tuning in. Yeah. <laughs> and also Colin makes an excellent point in chat. These games are not only being played on our Twitch. They are being run by the designers themselves. <gasps> oh, so, very cool. That's super yes. neat. So, Is yeah. the designer of business wizards themselves a business wizard? You can find all out all that and more if you come and watch RP Game Changers next week. Well, okay. Yes, I can see you. I have chat open. Dun, dun, dun. Um, but yeah. What else you got? All right. I think now that we've gone through everybody's socials and announced all the things, we have a giveaway to announce. Ooh. So if you give me that there winner, Dom, I will read it out. It's This is a fun... This is this is a fun sound to make. I don't know what's wrong. With I can't. I can't make a drum sound. sound. I can't make a drum sound with my mouth, or else I would. Like, I 
can make a water All right. drop. And the is winner of today's anymore? giveaway is Bitter Kiwi. Congratulations, Bitter Kiwi. Yay! You are the winner of our Die Hard Dice giveaway. Mm, make mm, sure mm, to mm. turn whispers on in Twitch so that we can whisper you and get your information so that those that stuff can be sent your way. Again, make sure whispers on Twitch are open so that we can get your information and send that information, uh, send your prize your way. Um, I want to say thank you again to everybody who joined us today, everybody who rated, gifted subs, resubbed, subbed for the first time, followed, gave bits, donated, became a Patreon member. We couldn't do any of this without you, and we are so grateful that you decided to come and spend your evening watching us create this story together. We will be back next week at 7 p.m. for more of Fall of Magic, but until then, remember, you do not need a game master to play games. You just need a great game, a few of your friends, and your imaginations. So, yeah. don't let the fact that you don't have a game master ruin your opportunity to play games. You don't need them. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.